Uh, yeah, I just want to thank my comrades for their very powerful, very um, direct, clear-minded words. And the reason why I say this, you know, for like Dine people, they say that your words and your breath is sacred. Like it's a sacred wind that comes out and our words have power. There's this Haudenosaunee feminist who wrote this line, a, a book about um, the Six Nations land struggle. Um, and the book came in, in 2006. And she said, you know, with nothing more than words, indigenous people changed history on the international arena. And indigenous, it is true, indigenous people are extremely oppressed <laughs> in the United States. Our numbers were very small, right, compared to the settler population in the United States. But what we can offer, right, what we can offer to the struggle for the liberation of Palestine and for the struggle for liberation of all people is our words, it's our stories, it's our memory, and it's our refusal to relinquish who we are and the relationship, the original relationship we have with this land. We will never be moved from that. We will never leave right? And we will never forget. And I think for me, that is what we offer, right, to our Palestinian relatives um, who are facing so much suffering, extreme settler violence in this moment. We, we are the memory of a long struggle, and we are the embodiment of the future that our ancestors struggled for, and the dream of liberation that all colonized and oppressed people share. And we are here, you know, to remind the world that even after 500 years, <laughs> right, that this is something that has not gone away. And in fact, it will never go away, no matter how much you suffer and how much you lose. And I think that is what we have to offer um, our Palestinian relatives, in addition to solidarity and the things that we might do, having the moral authority as the original people of these lands um, to push back against the violent settler project that is the United States. Um, and to help to lead that, to be the tip of the spear here of all liberation struggles in the movements that seek to seek a world of justice, equality, and peace, um, that seek to dismantle the United States. I hope you seek to dismantle the United States. And if that isn't your politics, okay. <laughs> I speak as if everybody has this commitment. Um, and the thing is, is that you should. You should listen to indigenous people when they're telling you that this is the goal. And that not only is this the goal, but this is the starting point, because I think Nick articulated this very clearly. Um, a decol decolonization is the only thing that is going to save us as a species, is the only thing that's going to save us as a planet. And everyone should just be on board with it. No questions asked. And I say this sometimes on the podcast, our Red Nation podcast, I'm the co-host of Red Power Hour, you know, like... Of the most oppressed ass people in Turtle Island, indigenous women are like on the top of that fucking list, okay? And incarcerated at higher numbers, murdered at higher numbers, missing at higher numbers, higher levels of rape and all kinds of sexual violence and sexual harassment. I mean, indigenous women struggle so hard under the settler regime that is the United States and the way that heteropatriarchy ties so closely into that. And if an indigenous woman is telling you that decolonization is the solution and also that there is real hope and that Palestine offers us, we, we said this in the speech, Palestine is the alternative path for native nations. And this is because we understand Palestine and the liberation of Palestine is the tip of the spear, right? It is a righteous struggle and it is so powerful that it has literally in 60 days, changed the entire world. The entire world has changed. I knew it. I knew it the moment that it happened, that nothing, and I mean nothing, for colonizers or for any of the good, humble people of the earth would be the same ever again. And we need to lean into that. Lean into the fact that colonizers are scared. Lean in to scaring them <laughs> and making them feel uncomfortable, right? It is because, it is because we have power. And sometimes being here in Minnesota, uh, it's real different organizing here. And it's also very different being indigenous here than it is from where I came from in Albuquerque. I find sometimes people here feel like they don't have power, especially native people and other folks. Like 
we have power. This is why millions of people are standing up for Palestine across the world. Like we have power. If we didn't have power, they wouldn't go so hard to silence the people. And Palestine, one of the things I have also been, had the honor of going to Palestine in 2011 on a decolonial field school when I was working on my PhD at the University of New Mexico. Palestine not only reminded me of my own humanity as a person living under occupation here, but Palestine taught me so much about the commitment to decolonization and samud, that steadfastness, right? That word again and again, what does it mean to be steadfast in your commitment for decolonization? And I think that that is something in my long path of political development and my journey since we started the Red Nation, that indigenous revolutionaries here have also taught me that steadfastness. And I encourage you all, to, you know, when we leave this event tonight, have that steadfastness, carry it in your heart. Do not let it go because we will win. And we know this because we have been doing this for hundreds of years. And even like I said, we've lost so much. We still believe we're going to win. We still will have the relationship with the land, right? We really believe this. And if indigenous people are telling you this, and if Palestinians are telling you this, then you better damn believe it yourself. <laughs> We're gonna win. 